Okay, so in our blank scene, let's go ahead and create a 2D scene with a root node of node 2D. Let's add a child node of a navigation region 2D. Okay, so from here, what we're going to want to do is create a new um, navigation polygon. And I'm going to go ahead and create this um, in the shape of the U. That way our AI entity actually has um, something to navigate around. Um, sorry, give me, give me a second um, for actually fixing this. So let's go ahead and create a new navigation polygon. Um, and then go ahead and click create points if you're having this issue too. And make sure that you actually have the marker rather than movement. Um, that way you can add these points. Uh, to the screen like I'm doing here just left click to add a point and loop it back to the origin point to finish that to finish that region okay let's also add a marker 2d node this will be uh, essentially and initially this is going to be where our AI entity is trying to navigate towards the position of the map we're going to grab that later in the code and let's add another child node of a character body 2d for for our AI entity um, and we can go ahead and rename this now just to make this clear for ourselves all right, so let's then also go and follow our basic node setup for something that's going to move. So we're going to add a sprite 2D, then we're going to add a collision shape 2D, and then for our AI here, we are now going to add a navigation agent 2D. Click create. So for our collision shape, we're then also going to, um, well, actually, you know what, let's add our sprite first. Uh, so you're just going to go ahead and load um, our the, the Godot icon, um, as is fairly standard when you don't have textures to work with. Okay, and now let's go ahead and create a rectangular um, shape 2D for the collision shape and make it match um, the make it match the body of our uh, AI entity sort of sprite here. I'm being more precise than needs to be for, for this particular example. Um, and then once that's done, we now need to actually write our script. So let's go ahead and right click the AI entity and click attach script. Um, and then we're just going to hit create. Mine says load, but we're just going to uh, click create. So while we are going to use physics process later on uh, due to move and slide, I'm going to delete everything else. Oh, except for extends character body 2D. That we will leave. Okay, so uh, one of the first things we want to do is give this thing a, a target to go to. So let's go ahead and give it a, a target. Um, so this is, we'll just call this movement target. And this is going to be a type marker uh, 2D for now. And I'll explain why we'll do that in a moment. Uh, another thing that we want to do is we're going to need a reference to our actual navigation entity. So we can also do export uh, var and then navigation agent. And this would be the navigation agent 2D. So <clears throat> well this this exposes uh, this exposes these two properties uh, on the AI entity node. Um, and this is what'll allow us to actually grab these these other objects. Now, something else that we can do, since the navigation agent 2D is actually a child of our AI entity node, um, we can actually, instead of giving it uh, the tag of an export, um, we can actually use the onReady tag. And this allows us to actually grab um, the navigation agent. Whoops, I should spell it correctly. Uh, a little more clearly as a child object um, of this of this particular node. Oops. Oh, sorry. It's habit to hit uh, Control S and save. Another thing that we want to do at this point in time, and also actually just real quick, both of these work. Um, you can use either whatever one would be your your preference. Um, this is maybe a little cleaner. Uh, a little more into best practice uh, because on ready handles ensuring that you don't grab the navigation agent uh, this particular node until it is actually you know set up 
Um, although either either works. Obviously, we are still using this particular methodology to grab our marker 2D, and the reason for that is because the marker 2D is, is going to be outside of uh, this this AI entity uh, node itself. Okay, so another thing that we want to do is we're going to set a, uh, a movement speed. Um, whoops, and this will be the speed of our of our AI here. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually get into the movement of our of our guy here. So what we're initially going to want to do is inside of our physics process, uh, we're going to want to check if the navigation agent has actually reached its destination. Um, so we're going to call is uh, navigate is navigation finished, and if it is, we are going to return because it has reached its destination. So there is no intent uh, to move anywhere else. Um, <clears throat> however, if that returns false and it has not reached its destination, we are going to we are going to want to do some uh, some math here to figure out where exactly we need to go. So we're going to grab our current position, which is going to be our, our global position, uh, and then we're also going to grab where we would like to go. So our next path position. This we then actually grab from our navigation agent through get next path position. So we then uh, set, and I'm going to expand this so it's a little easier to see what we're doing here. So we're then going to um, set our new velocity, which is going to be the next path position minus our current entity position. We are then going to normalize that value and we are then going to assign our velocity uh, to the new velocity. Uh, now one other thing we're going to do in between these two steps um, is we are going to take our new velocity and we're going to multiply it by our movement speed. Oops, there we are. Okay, so here we can get rid of this section too as well. This is what our script is looking like at the moment, and I will save this real quick, and we'll just call this we'll call this example two for now. Okay, so if we go back to our two D scene. Let's go back to our AI entity, and up here where it's looking for an object to be assigned, we're going to assign that marker 2D. Okay, now, one other thing that we need to do before this is going to run is that we actually need to assign the uh, this, this marker 2D as the target position for our entity. So if we go back to our script, what we're going to want to do is we're going to inside of our ready function, we are going to assign the target position for our navigation agent as the uh, movement target position. There we are. If we go back to our scene, and we hit play, we should see our entity begin to move towards that position, navigating around this part of the region um, that's not mapped and going towards the target. Now, something you might notice is that the debugger says there's some issues. There are three errors here. Navigation server map query failed because it was made before first map synchronization. So the way we can fix that is by making sure that our physics frame uh, is actually has actually finished before uh, we query that that navigation server. Uh, so if we go over to our script again, what we're going to want to do is await the physics frame. So you can do await await get tree dot physics frame, 
And if we were to go back to our 2D scene and we hit play, although we're not done yet, um, our errors do go away. Uh, now this is a bit odd and I would not recommend this because uh, when you're awaiting this physics frame, you're essentially waiting for this particular um, loop to be called. So for every single frame, we're calling an await for the uh, particular function that we're already in. Um, so that's a bit strange. So that is definitely not uh, something we want to do. However, if we move it into our ready, uh, our errors actually come back. Uh, this does not, this does not um, solve anything for us. So what's, what's important here is that not only are we doing the await, but we actually need to wrap this in a thing called, called deferred. So we're gonna create a, uh, another function here real quick. It's called set movement target. And we're gonna take these two lines and we're gonna put them, whoops, my bad. I was not paying attention there. And we're gonna put them inside set movement target. So inside of our ready, we are now going to we are now going to say called deferred, and inside of here it's a inside of here we're now going to put our set movement target function. When we hit play, you'll see no uh, no issues down here from our debugger, and our uh, AI entity is pathing as intended. Um, another couple of things to help with this, to just help with our, our understanding and seeing that our AI is working, um, we can click de uh, the debug tab up at the top left and select visible paths and visible navigation. We can furthermore click on the navigation agent 2D node under our AI entity, go to debug and turn on enable. When we run the scene again, we will see the path that, this is, that our AI entity is moving on uh, towards the target. Okay, uh, so another thing I wanted to look at real quick is making the uh, AI entity uh, not go to a static point, but actually follow the player as they move around. Um, I'm not going to cover in this video uh, how to create a, 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 the, you know, a basic top-down character uh, that, the, that the player controls. Uh, we're just looking at uh, making the AI entity follow the player. So one, we've gotten rid of our marker 2D node, and instead we have a player uh, here. The player is a character body 2D. So if you click back to our AI entity, um, we don't have anything assigned for the marker 2D region. So if we go back to our script, what we're going to want to do is change our movement target from marker 2D to a character body 2D. So uh, this is now going to be referencing, this is now going to be able to reference our player. So we go back to our 2D scene, and we now go ahead and drag our player up into that uh, same area that we had originally assigned uh, the marker 2D to, uh, as now our, our, our player is assigned. So if we hit play, we can see that the AI entity is traveling towards it. If you notice, however, when we move out of the way, it does not update. Right, and this is because we sent the movement target at the beginning of the script, and we don't update it ever, no matter where the uh, player moves. So we could copy and paste our, uh, our target position update into our physics process. However, and you can probably see the, the problem that this will already create, right? If we go back uh, to our scene and we load this up, we got issues in our debugger again. Now this is now following the player rather than going to that static point. But if we go to our errors, errors, we can see the navigation server map query failed error happening again. So let's go ahead and stop this. And once again, we already have the solution uh, for this. We're going to call our deferred, our deferred set movement target function again. So here inside our physics process, let's replace line 16 uh, with call deferred set movement target. If we save our scene now and play again, we won't have any errors and we can move around and our uh, AI entity will follow us around. So this does not, you know, follow us outside of that region. As we already mentioned, it goes to the closest point that it can follow us to. Uh, but this is how you would update this so that it, it, you have a basic 
enemy or an NPC or something uh, following your player character. Uh, as always, the code is uh, linked in a GitHub repo that's linked in the description below. Uh, so if you'd like to go and reference any of that, including the player here, um, feel free to go and do that. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm looking forward to talking more in the future.